You want the best for your car? You already watch our tutorials. So the best place for the best deal is to buy from the Mr. Auto app. Easy, fast, and with better prices than on the website. You can find the book Clutch Kit used in the video exclusively on the Mr. Auto website and in the link in the description. Turn your engine off. Pull up the handbrake. Pull on the bonnet release lever and open the bonnet. To carry out this operation, you have to remove the battery. To do this, we recommend watching the video How to Replace the Clear 4 Battery. You will now need to remove the battery tray. Grab a socket wrench, an extender and a 13mm socket and unscrew the three screws holding the tray. Using a socket wrench and a 10mm socket, unscrew the screw behind the tray. Then, using a 10mm spanner, unscrew the nut holding the cable sleeve on the battery tray. Using a flathead screwdriver, pop out the cable sleeves from its slot. You can now remove the battery tray. Next, unclip the two gear control cables by prying on the ball joints using a flathead screwdriver. Then pry the two gear control cables free using a flathead screwdriver. In order to change the clock kit on your vehicle, you must lift the front of the car and remove the wheels to gain complete access. Loosen the stud bolts on the front wheels. Raise the front of the vehicle and put it in the two axle stands. We strongly suggest watching the tutorial, raising your vehicle safely, before carrying out this step. You will then be able to take off the wheels. Don't forget to slide them under the vehicle. It is now time to get under the vehicle. Changing the clutch requires to remove both drive shafts. The gearbox must therefore be bled so that the oil doesn't spill everywhere. We recommend you watch our video training the Clear 4 1.2 16 valve gearbox. First, use a flathead screwdriver to prevent the disc from rotating. Using a breaker bar and a 30mm socket, loosen the axle nut on both sides of the vehicle. Now you have to remove both control arms. To do this, we recommend you watch our video Changing the Clear 4 Suspension Control Arms. You can now remove the drive shaft from the stop axle. To do this on the driver's side, we recommend you watch our video Changing the Cardon Shaft on the Clear 4. On the passenger side, before the drive shaft can be removed, the transmission bearing bolt must be unscrewed with a 13mm spanner. Remove the cotton shaft. Then unscrew the three screws of the anti-tilt device using an 18mm socket. Then remove it. Remove the front mudguard retaining clips on both sides using a pry bar and a T27 Torx key. Then remove the mudguards. You'll need to lower the engine to remove the gearbox. To do so, you need to remove the half cradle. 
the half sub frame cradle holds the radiator, so plan to attach the radiator by its upper part throughout the operation. On the passenger side, start by removing the lower screw from the side reinforcement on the half sub frame cradle using a socket wrench and a 13mm socket. On the driver's side, unscrew the upper screw from the side reinforcement because the entire reinforcement must be removed. Then, using the socket wrench and an 18mm socket, unscrew the two screws that hold the half subframe cradle. Remove the half subframe cradle by sliding it forward. Using a socket wrench and a 13mm socket, remove the screws. You can see their locations more easily on this previously removed gearbox. Start by unscrewing the threaded rod located next to the passenger side carton shaft enclosure using a socket wrench and a 13mm socket. Then remove the screw just above it. Using the same tools, remove the screw located on the opposite side holding the plastic protection on the flywheel. Using a small pry bar, unclip the protective plastic from the flywheel. Remove the screw above the plastic protection on the gearbox side. Using a ratchet, an extension and a 13mm socket, unscrew the screw that holds the engine electrically grounded. Using a socket wrench and a 13mm socket, unscrew the first screw from the starter. Remove the reverse sensor by pressing on the tap and pulling on the connector. Now, you need to unclip the clutch slave cylinder sheath from its clamps. Then, lift the two clutch slave cylinder clips with a flat screwdriver. Remove the clutch slave cylinder. You can install the bleed cap on the clutch receiver to prevent brake fluid from spilling out. It is now time to use the jack by the crankcase in order to rest against the engine when removing the engine mount on the gearbox side. Using a 16mm socket, start by unscrewing the central screw from the gearbox buffer. Then, using the same tools, unscrew the three screws that hold the gearbox bracket. Then lower the engine a few centimetres, making sure it doesn't pull on any part as you lower it. Then remove the bracket. Disconnect the gearbox breather. Remove the second screw from the starter using the socket wrench, a large extender and a 13mm socket.
pry the starter motor away from the gearbox as the centering pin can make it difficult to separate the two blocks. Using a socket wrench, an extender and a 13mm socket, unscrew the screw holding the cooling house bracket. Using the same tools, unscrew the two screws from the retaining bracket for the cable sleeve and the TTC sensor. Once unscrewed, remove the sensor. Remove the reverse sensor sleeve clipped onto the gearbox. Finish by removing the last two upper gearbox retaining screws. The gearbox is now free. Shift it outwards to completely disengage it from the engine block before lowering it. Don't hesitate to ask for help from a friend to remove it, as it is heavy and difficult to handle. You can now view the clutch on your vehicle. Tip. To prevent the clutch from rotating, use the long stud bolt that connects the gearbox to the engine block. Fit a combination spanner between the clutch screw and the stud bolt to stop rotation. Using a socket wrench and a 10mm socket, remove the six screws that hold the clutch and the flywheel, repeating the clutch immobilizing technique. Remove the clutch. You can now see the flywheel. In some cases, it is crucial to change it at the same time as the clutch. If necessary, we recommend you watch our video How to change the flywheel on the Megane 2 1.5 DCI. It is exactly the same as the Clio 4. Okay, guys, if we can share this video with you and help you save a lot of money, is also thanks to our partner, Mr. Otto. So, if you want to support us and buy the part for this operation, visit their website. Okay, back to work. You can find the ball clutch disc and the housing used in the video on the Mr. Auto website and in the link in the description. Start by cleaning the flat surface of the clutch housing that is in contact with the clutch disc using some brake cleaner and a cloth. Then fit the clutch disc by positioning the part with the springs into the housing. In order to reinstall the clutch on the flywheel, the clutch disc and housing need to be perfectly centered. It is therefore imperative that you have a clutch centering tool, something you can find in the description of the video. Once the tool is properly installed, check that the disc and housing are perfectly aligned. If this is not the case, you will not be able to insert the transmission shaft into the clutch disc when fitting the clutch housing. Clean the contact surface of the flywheel with some breaker cleaner and a cloth. You can see the three centering pins for fitting the clutch to the flywheel. Take the newly assembled part and install it in the flywheel. We strongly advise you to install brand new clutch screws. You can find them in the description of the video. Roughly replace the screws by hand. Then tighten the staggered or quincux pattern using a ratchet. You can now remove the centering tool. Finalize the tightening of the screws with a torque wrench. When you change your clutch, it is important to also replace the clutch release bearing. Using a ratchet and a 10mm socket, unscrew the two screws on the clutch release bearing And remove it. It is now time to clean the inside of the housing with brake cleaner as it is lined with dust and particles from the old disc. 
clean the transmission shaft using brake cleaner and a piece of cloth. Then grease the cavity with gear grease. But don't use too much grease, because if the grease spreads out, it may affect the clutch's efficiency. You can also find the grease in the video description. You can find the bolt clutch release bearing used in the video on the Mistwater website and in the link in the description. Fit the clutch release bearing onto the transmission shaft and screw it back on. Finish up the tightening with a torque wrench. Now you can put the gearbox back on. You will have to insert the transmission shaft into the clutch disc cavity. All parts used in this tutorial are supplied by our trusted partners. These partners also help us create as many video tutorials as possible. Check them out in the description below. Again, you're advised to get help from a friend to handle this tricky step. When you place the first two screws back in, preferably one on the top of the engine block and one on the bottom, tighten them very lightly and check that the gearbox is resting against the engine block. This means that your transmission shaft is positioned correctly in the clutch. Reinsert the starter into its slot, then screw the two retaining screws back in. Finish off the tightening with a torque wrench. Using a socket wrench, an extender and a 13mm socket, screw in the cooling house bracket screw. Refit the TDC sensor and retighten the two screws in the cable sleeve retaining bracket. Tighten the screws under the clutch slave cylinder. Finish off the tightening with a torque wrench. Then retighten the other gearbox retaining screws. Put the threaded rod back in place. Tighten the screw located above the previous one. And finish tightening both screws using the torque wrench. Replace the plastic flywheel cover. Tighten the screw that holds it. Reconnect the reverse sensor connector. Clip the sensor sleeve back onto the gearbox. Screw the grounding screw back into the engine block. Reconnect the breather. Screw the gearbox bracket back onto the gearbox. Using the jack, leave the engine block and pass the vertical screw of the gearbox bracket through the gearbox buffer. Then screw the nut back on. Finish off the tightening with a torque wrench. Finish tightening the three screws using the torque wrench. Remove the jack. You now have to bleed the clutch system. At the clutch slave cylinder, lift the two clips and remove the plastic plug from the new bearing. Reinsert the hose in the clutch slave cylinder and lower the two clips.
clip the clutch slave cylinder sheath back in. Add brake fluid to the reservoir as the following operation may consume some brake fluid. Then remove the pleat plug on the clutch receiver. Then thread a plastic hose dipped in a bottle over the bleeder valve. Two people are needed for this manipulation. Since the clutch system was disabled, the pedal will feel very soft. So start by pumping the clutch pedal by hand, then keep it fully depressed. At this time, lift only the first clip, allowing you to pull the hose without it disconnecting, but enough to let the pressure escape through the bleeder valve. Push the hose back in and put the clip back in place before releasing the pedal. Repeat the pumping, then hold down the pedal. And repeat the bleeding steps. You can repeat these steps between 5 and 10 times until the pedal feels hard, flexible and easily returns to its initial position. But most importantly, until no more air is escaping from the bleeder valve. Remove the hose using flat nose pliers. Then put the bleed cap back on. Take the opportunity to readjust your brake fluid level. Reinstall the anti-tilt engine mount and screw the three screws back in. Re-embed the drive shaft on the gearbox side. Then reinsert the drive shaft into the stub axle. Do the same with the drive shaft on the passenger side. Put it back in place and screw the transmission bearing back on. Reinstall the control arm ball joints in the stub axles. Then screw it back in. Reinstall the hub nuts. To be able to screw the hub nuts back on, you have to block the disc rotation. Insert a thin flatted screwdriver that can slip in between the two sides of the disc. You have to insert it in front of the brake caliper mount so that it puts up against the latter. Screw the hub nuts back on. Finish off the tightening with a torque wrench. It is now time to reinstall the half cradle. Refit it by the engine bed and put the side reinforcements in place. You can now quickly retighten the two halves of frame cradle retaining screws. And refit the radiator on the half subframe cradle. Finish tightening the two screws. Tighten the lower screw of the side reinforcement on the passenger side. Tighten the upper screw of the side reinforcement of the driver's side. Remember to remove the clamps previously installed on the radiator. It is now necessary to refill the oil in the gearbox. To do this, we recommend you watch our video How to Train the Clio 4 1.216 Valve Gearbox. You can now put the mud guards back in place. Put the wheels of your vehicle back on. And lower it to the ground. Reinsert the gear controls into their slots. Then re engage the ball joints. Put the battery tray back in place. Then screw it back on. Screw the nut of the electrical sheath back on. Then 
We tighten the tray retaining screw. Clip the sleep pack on the battery tray. Reinstall the battery. To do this, we recommend watching the video How to Replace the Clear 4 Battery. Operation completed. Hi, it's Theo from Usetool. I hope this video has helped you a lot in your car maintenance. We would be super grateful if you could spread the word so that we can produce even more tutorials. Simply give us a like, a comment, and hit that subscribe button. It really helps us boost the channel and help the whole community. Thanks a lot and have a great one.